Hi, my name is Bernard Mwepe, Judge Mwepe, retired Judge President, but presently the tax on board. Today we are speaking from the USB leaders anchor. We will be discussing about the challenges faced by the revenue authorities in collecting tax and how they could go about doing with the cooperation of the public. And in particular, we shall be talking about and indeed dealing with the perception the public have that tax money is sometimes not used prudently and to everybody's benefit. As the tax ombud, I stand somewhere between, on the one hand, the taxpayer, and on the other, SARS to make sure that uh, the playing fields are leveled in relation to each other. My ultimate question is going to be, do we live really and truly in a politically stable country, stable enough, politically stable enough to enable us to have a healthy economy. I have some reservations about that, despite my always optimism that is forever there. But I will not pass judgment on that. I will just pose that issue and deal with it. What, what is really the basis of tax collection? Yes, we do have legislation that force, forces us to pay tax. But I don't think that is sufficient basis. I think there must also be a moral basis. I think the taxpayer, all taxpayers should feel morally obliged to do the right thing and pay tax. But, and of course the tax collector um, also does have certain responsibilities in relation there too. But first and foremost, uh, such collection of tax must be done fairly and evenly. The other responsibility that the taxpayer has is not just to pay tax, but to hold those whose duty it is to administer, to spend our, our tax in a responsible and prudent manner. And I'm glad the minister alluded to that on Wednesday. But we acknowledge that um, the minister in drawing up the budget and indeed SARS in collecting the monies do so under very, very, very difficult circumstances. And what are these difficult circumstances? We mention them not as a matter of fashion, but to make sure that they get addressed by those who have the appropriate authority and perhaps even the duty to do so. These are indicated by the fact that a large number of our people are unemployed. These, would, uh, these are potential taxpayers, but if obviously if they are not employed, then of course we won't be able to collect any tax from them. And of course, the tax basis becomes narrowed. There is no economic growth. And we have reason to say to ourselves, and not fool ourselves, we, have, we must say to ourselves our economy is not all right. And if we don't accept that, then we won't be able to deal with the challenges properly. But maybe this morning I should just try and share with you what I think are some of the causes for our economic woes. But there's one overarching point, and that is lack of prudent use of state resources and money. And under that, you'll find a host of challenges. You'll find corruption, which is a well-known fact, and I'm not going to go into that. We know that uh, it permeates all levels of, of a government. Now, it's little sister, nepotism, that goes with it, that goes with corruption. 
where you find people are employed not on the basis of their skills but because of their political connectivity. Now all these things really lead us to serious troubles. Then also you have got a very, very bloated cabinet. These things are very costly. They are eating up into our purse and monies that should be should have been directed to vital issues, such as provision of important and basic services, goes elsewhere. Yes, these are some of the problems that um, beset us. And of course, one of the problems is uh, lack of fiscal discipline. That's one of the challenges to our economy, the causes to our economy, that causes which lead to our economy being in trouble. Well, but ladies and gentlemen, yes, when I started, I said that there's a particular issue that I want to deal with, a particular question. Is our country politically stable enough, at least for the purpose of our discussion? which is about the economy. Perhaps some people would be quick to say, we have got the best constitution in the world, what a democracy, we hold elections every five years, and therefore we are a stable country politically. I have severe reservations about that. Perhaps for a start, we need to have a common understanding with how to define a politically stable country. My view is that mere absence of civil war in a country or uprising does not imply that you have a politically stable country. I ask the question, seriously? When parliament opens, you send 400 members of the South African National Defense Force for code, preserving code law and order. If that statement is correct, well, can you really seriously argue that we are a politically stable country? But if you do that, you need to explain. Otherwise, if you don't explain properly, then it gives us the impression that there's a reason why we deploy 400 soldiers, perhaps armed. I'm sure soldiers are always armed. That question is not an academic question because that exercise of deploying 400 soldiers may well be saying to those who should be bringing money in here and therefore supporting our economy, something is not right. Something is so wrong that we need to deploy soldiers. Are we a politically stable country where each time there are elections, there's, there's such a blatant political intolerance between the parties. In fact, sometimes, even within the parties. Again, I am not so sure. And again, what message does that send to those who have got to interact with us economically from outside our country? Because as the minister said, when you put in your money in a country, there are a few questions you ask yourself. Do they have a dependable independent judiciary that would adjudicate my complaints and fairly and independently, uninfluenced by the politicians? And if the answer is yes, it's not, it's not a complete answer because you need stability. Is my property going to be grabbed by somebody? Um, because you've got, either you've got to buy property and erect some premises or lease 
premises for 30 years or so before you come to do business in here. And you will then be told that in this country, um, there are peculiar things such as building hijacking. Not only are we, have we exported cars to countries, but we exported car hijacking also to our countries. So now we are in the process of exporting building theft, hijacking of buildings. Some a phenomenon that regrettably seems to be known only here in this country. But these issues are vital, issues of economic, economic, economic importance. You know, people, we, we pride ourselves, as I've said, about the goodness of our constitution. We, we, we say we hold elections every year, and every five years, and therefore we, we are good. But have we really passed the test? Have we really been tested as to whether we are two true Democrats? I don't think so. I think that test is still to come. Should that moment come when, for example, uh, the ANC, which has been in power for, for so many years, loses elections, will we be able to see a situation where there will be a peaceful transfer of power? Will we have that? We, may, we have the right to reserve our judgment with regard to that until we see it happen. What I'm not so sure is whether we should beat our chest proudly and say we are true Democrats when we have not yet gone through real, real tests. As I've said, ladies and gentlemen, the level of political intolerance in the country is such that question justifiably arises as to whether we are a truly politically stable country. Now, we must mention these things when occasions such as this one arises, arise, because however unpleasant those questions may be, however irritating they may be, may be to some people, we have got the right to ask them, because they impact very materially on our economy. In there lie answers to the huge number of unemployed people. In there lie answers to why we experience such a low economic growth rate, which is being revised down and down and down all the time. In, the, in, the, in, in, in all those questions and answers, may very, in those questions may lie answers as to why we have got so many protest actions in relation to service delivery. And indeed, as I've said, in those questions, in that particular question that I've asked, may very well lie the answer why today Pretoria is as it is today, why people are out in the streets in Pretoria. I said that I was not going to pass, pass judgment. I'm just going to ask that question and pose it. I have identified some uh, issues which prompt to make me, which cause me to doubt whether or not I should certify, to the extent that I have such powers to do so, certify this country as a truly politically stable country in which uh, there is an atmosphere, an appropriate climate for the growth of our economy. And maybe the difficult circumstances that I've uh, re referred to, which was merely some of them, would abate and would be able to collect money better to serve our people. Thank you very much.